All right, let's talk spoilers for Spider-Man 2. I've been dying to talk about the story and stuff for this game. I did review it. I talked about it a lot on this channel, and I talked about it also on Game Ranks on the Before You Buy. So this video here is gonna be filled with spoilers. I already talked about the gameplay and like my, my cons with the game. You know, the Mary Jane section still didn't love. Like the first game, I still wish it had a little more variation, but I once again really like the story it told, so that's what I'm going to do in this video finally. So hopefully you played it or you watched it all on YouTube, whatever. I'm gonna go in depth. And uh, just to quote like the old homie Jeremy Johns, like this isn't going to be a play-by-play -play of every single thing from the game. Just stuff I specifically wanted to talk about or had something to say. If you're new here, I just kind of yap. I just kind of talk about stuff I love, so. Uh, that, that's what I'm doing here. So with Spider-Man 2, uh, I think it's good to, I'll just start at the back. I'll start with the ending of the game. I really liked how it ended, shocker, uh, for a couple of specific reasons. Like at the end, you get a couple of things. Like you get a Miles who is essentially through his arc established from the death of his dad in Spider-Man 2018. You have Miles as the Spider-Man who has been trying to figure it out kind of having it figured out. And then you had Peter who had gone through everything uh, he had went through and he almost gets a little bit of a break, a retirement, uh, someone who has been through a lot and you kind of start to feel what he's been through, especially with this one, with, with the pressures on his relationship. It was nice to see him maybe potentially step back for a minute and let Miles be the Spider-Man, uh, you know it's probably not gonna last that long because he's still Spider-Man and we've seen this type of thing in arcs so many times before, but I just like the feeling of that whole ending moment. And I also really liked, for me, it felt like it was like the big significant kiss finally between Peter and MJ. We've had their relationship highlighted before, obviously in the previous game. Uh, and then in this one, it's very much like a real relationship where it's not lovey-dovey all the time. They're going through things, they're struggling through things, they're figuring out if they're going to live together or not. Uh, and then <laughs> Peter having a symbiote and everything like that. Uh, so for them to finally kiss at the end, I'm corny, I'm old fashioned, but like, I felt that. Also, I'm just gonna go out on a limb for a second, be a little spicy and say like, people were talking about how like, they made Mary Jane ugly in this game. Most people were judging that from one screenshot and just popping off. I'm just saying like for a video game character, I still think Mary Jane's kind of hot. Not as hot as Miles' mom though. Yeah, I said it. Rio, what's up? But just to keep with the mopey stuff, the emotional stuff for a minute, uh, and I had kind of alluded to this in the previous video, uh, what I really liked about the game that, and it was a little bit more subtle. It was a little, a little more nuanced, but it, it was, the Peter Miles relationship where number one, I liked how it handled having them both in the game, having them both relevant in the game, uh, having Miles face off and be looped up in some classic Spider-Man plots and classic villains. It just worked really well. It didn't feel forced. But the thing I liked the most was the moments in the game where Peter is almost like, and you have to like, look, you have to see Peter's face in the background sometimes when he's looking at Miles. This is a Peter that is like in awe of Miles, he's proud of him. He's actually like, he seemed to me like someone who came off at first, like who didn't know what he was doing with this like other Spider-Man thing, looking at him with like excitement and awe at just how good this kid is doing and how he's going to be the next Spider-Man. There's just moments on his face sometimes. And that's, that's good video game graphics, I guess, for like showing that or me catching that. Uh, along with that, just there was a moment where Peter says to Miles, like, no, that wasn't Spider-Man that saved me back there. That was Miles. And I was like, oh, man, oh, that's so nice. The other big thing, like with with Miles's arc, it was forgiveness. And I really like that. But what I liked about Miles specifically in this game, uh, and again, it goes back to like Peter being wowed by him, is that he did what Peter couldn't always or couldn't do in these games. He couldn't convert an enemy. Miles was able to essentially forgive and somewhat rehabilitate an enemy with Martin Lee. And that is commendable as a Spider-Man character. It's cool. Also, while we're on the topic of Miles, Miles' new costume, pretty cool. Uh, I have to like sit on it for a while. The color scheme is a little is a little weird, but like I love the running sneakers. I love how like athletic it looks. And also just like I, I give them props for going totally different and trying something different instead of being like, oh, what Miles is is Spider-Man, but in a in like a black and red suit. They tried to kind of rethink it and and kind of move a little bit past the classic Spider-Man design. It might not be for everybody. It might not be for me long-term, but like 
I like them trying. And again, the Adidas he was rocking, I very much love that. But all that stuff is like the comic booky stuff. I guess if we're still talking about the ending, love them teasing, teasing Otto again. And they're like, what are you writing? He's like, the final chapter. Like, cool, whatever. Uh, I, I definitely wanna see where this is gonna go. But also them teasing Silk is interesting because nice of them to go for that. Nice of them to reach for that. They're they're maybe trying, you notice with some side things and some sub characters, like they are reaching for not always just the basic run of the mill Spider-Man stuff. And Silk is a, a little bit more of a cut for some people. So that's good. But they went fucking crazy with a lot of stuff. And like now just jumping into the crazy stuff, uh, Venom, I said in my previous video, I love the way they did Venom here. I think they really understood Venom. I think they got Venom. And I got some pushback for that, specifically because this Venom isn't Eddie Brock. Now, that's like when I think Insomniac or, or whoever, whoever's reinterpreting a comic thing I love. Uh, when I say that they get it or it feels faithful or they nailed it, it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one thing. It just has to have the right feel. It has to have a right like oomph behind it. And for me, uh, it was the dread, uh, the, the, the power of Venom, the threat of Venom that just makes you feel kind of uncomfortable. From the 90s animated intro where you see Venom swallowing Peter Parker in his dreams, you know Venom is like this next level threat. And the game, like I, I really felt it. Interestingly enough though, they did kind of just do, <laughs> excuse me, they did just kind of do uh, Web of Shadows. Right? Like they, that's kind of what this is. And I was not upset about that. Once I saw the city starting to get goopy, I was like, hell yeah, let's go. Let's clear out some symbiote nests. And uh, th those enemy types are kind of annoying, but yeah, challenging, cool. Again though, uh, with Venom, uh, the fact that they went for fucking winged Venom, the fact that th that, that was crazy, uh, but also the fact that you get to play as Venom, I really hope that they do kind of like a Miles spinoff game to you know keep us for spider-man 3 and i would love it where you play as venom or something because it was really fun it felt pretty thought out it wasn't as complicated like as in-depth but there was enough there there was enough juice there and also a lot of destruction on screen like you were smashing shit that like i would love to see that you know drawn out to a bigger thing but the way venom works with harry like i i did really like the final confrontation i liked it taking place in their high school um as a visual set piece i thought it was absolutely wild over the top buck wild crazy shit but also um you know coupling back with the flashback sequences which i really loved i love those they gave peter glasses they made him more dorky they made him figure things out but like in like a 2000s way like harry kind of looked like a 2000s kid like listen to fallout boy or something like that i i really like that uh the, the sequences were fun and simple and charming and then there's like a flashback one that you can play as a side mission where peter gets his first job at the bugle which is insane. Like if you if you skip that or you don't do the side missions, that was such a cool little nice extra compelling side thing with a young Peter Spider-Man. Like you're going through Madison Square Park, you get into a little fight with some goons and you meet JJ and you give him the first photo of Spider-Man for the Daily Bugle. I love that. But the thing I've been dying to scream about, I've been, I've been so happy uh, <laughs> since I've played the game, uh, is, is that they did Agent Venom. Are you fucking kidding me? I was so happy about that. It's a small thing that not a lot of people are gonna care about, but seeing Harry's first manifestation of the symbiote suit in pretty much the style of Agent Venom, that made me so happy. Agent Venom is uh, a, a Flash arc where, where, where essentially Flash gets the symbiote, he's troubled, uh, and he ends up, it, it's cool as hell. I think it's kind of an underrated idea or concept in Marvel Comics. And just seeing them kind of like visually nod to that, just just made me happy. But again, all the Venom shit, loved it. Uh, the one Mary Jane sequence I did like kind of like uh, was when, you know, Peter as like this nasty symbiote freak is the threat and it's a little scary. The symbiote really had it in this one. And obviously really when Venom is full fledged, Tony Todd crushing it as Venom from, you know, to the end with pulling Harry out, all of that, <laughs> I loved it. But also the fact that like, it was just a quick thing, uh, Venom uh, made Scream, and then you fight Scream, insane. 
like over the top really went kind of crazy and i was like this is where it's gonna get like insane for people i liked it because i was like oh scream showed up some people might be like what the fuck is happening right now girl venom <laughs> but i really like that it was almost like over and done with very quickly the game didn't really have a lot of time for like peter and mj to like stop and talk about that but I thought it was a cool thing, and it was essentially Scream throwing back at Peter all of Peter's reservations and problems with being with Mary Jane. Like, it really spoke to, like, the guy who's with a girl out of his league. Like, when you feel like you're not good enough constantly, and then Scream manifested that by just kind of pointing out every aspect of the relationship that Peter's been screwing up and how Mary Jane's had to have uh, essentially had to carry him. Uh, she kind of like Scream kind of exacerbated that and threw it in his face. And it made for like some cool, compelling boss battle dialogue. Also, Craven don't have too much to say about Craven other than good. Great interpretation of Craven. It's nice to see him on screen as like a Craven that I imagine uh, before they like Sony releases that weird fucked up Craven movie that they're doing. I don't know what the deal is with that, but this this Craven was imposing. The performance was great. He felt powerful. He felt intense. And I like that they kind of did like a Craven's last hunt, but also kind of like a Spider-Man life story in there. Uh, just a good spin. Halfway through, I thought his enemy faction was like a little ridiculous, a little dumb, but yeah, good stuff. Also, uh, the Fantastic Four. When I found the Baxter building, I shit my pants. That's great. Just good stuff. Again, they show restraint though. They have Avengers Tower. They have the Baxter building now. Uh, and of course, like the Sanctum was, you know, blown out a little bit more. Wong was teased a little bit, but they didn't go nuts. I thought Dr. Strange, like this, a new version of Dr. Strange was going to like fly down. Uh, but they kept it, you know, they kept it a little reserved. They held back in certain aspects. And I, I like when they do that. To do the anti-venom thing and do it as a like good Peter symbiote. It's interesting. It's creative. And I, I think it looked cool. It was obviously like a good gameplay solution for you still having symbiote powers after in the story, Peter loses the, the symbiote. So it kind of was created out of like necessity uh, mechanically. But it, again, it looks cool and it, it's a good spin on the anti-venom thing. So if you can't tell, again, I, I really liked it. I wish it was longer. I wish it had a little bit more time to breathe in certain sections. I would have liked even more time with Peter. I still wanted to even have the game dive even more into Peter with Aunt May's death. I know it was acknowledged in the last game, but I, I thought they could have continued that as an interesting arc. But it seems like the game didn't really want to harp on it too much. Uh, but where it, it did spend time, I liked in terms of building up the friendship between Harry and Peter and MJ, this like trifecta of friendship and having like, I just like a good compelling like Harry arc. I always think Harry is interesting, like Harry drama in the comics too. Although I still just wish like one game maker or movie studio out there would be brave enough to give him his weird hair from the comics like what is what is going on there dude uh and and like having him have the, the illness and seeing the friends react to the illness and respond to him doing well felt very real like i i, I just liked it and i know some people would argue that like like harry's origin or, or essentially his version of venom isn't as compelling as say the issues that eddie brock has with peter with spider-man like whatever I like the personal connection here and uh, like, you know, again, it's an interesting spin, but the fact that he survived at the end, it, you know, I don't, I don't know if it like takes away the impact, but it makes me wonder what else they're going to do. Speculation aside, uh, they're, they're setting up Norman like they are right for, for Green Goblin. I love the way they're doing it here. This Norman seems somewhat complex. While he was kind of like a, you know, bad guy, boss dad, like in the first game, uh, the second game, he, he's given a couple of moments to have some depth. He seems like he does actually really give a shit about his son. He seems like a driven man who clearly may be driven too far at a point. And that's what I would like to see. But a good performance, really good performances by everyone from Miles' mom, Rio Morales. I really liked some scenes between the two of them where it felt like a natural, healthy relationship between a mother and like a like a, like a grown son, like that's working. To again, Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker, just out of this world here, especially doing a little bit of like, you know, the 90s animated, get back here, shocker. Oh, and I didn't even talk about them teasing Carnage. Crazy that they would just throw that in in like you know side stuff i mean granted it was like the bigger side mission plot of the story but 
just having that teased was cool. I would love to see that all in the game. Like that would be the ultimate 90. So when I said in the previous video, 90s comics kids dream come true, I really meant when it's like Venom covering the screen, doing crazy shit, fighting Spider-Man, screams there, all this stuff happening. Me as a kid, I had a poster on my wall that had Venom and Carnage like encroaching on Spider-Man. And I just looked at it and I went, wow, man, Venom is so cool. Carnage is so cool. I love Spider-Man. And like this game is the embodiment of that. Me staring at that silly little poster. I probably got it a book fair when I was 11. <laughs> and you know what? Good job, Insomniac. <laughs> this was meandering. I was going all over the place, but I think that's a good place to end. Uh, I really like the game. Again, I don't know if it had the whoa, oh my God, of the first like 2018 game, but this one ups the stakes. It goes crazier. It goes zanier. It goes wackier. And I was very happy for that. I am grateful for another good Spider-Man story, different inter interpretations, but like good faith interpretations of these characters doing cool things the way I kind of imagined them or really felt them as a kid. So I'm excited to see where it goes next. That's it. This does feel like the dark middle chapter, if you will, the Empire Strikes Back, the whatever. So uh, where can they go from here? I don't know, but maybe I'll make a video talking about that at some point. But for now, I wanna to talk to you guys in the comments about everything. What do you think about the game? Uh, what do you think about Venom? What do you think about Harry being Venom? Do you think Agent Venom is cool? <laughs> Let's talk about anything. Let's talk about the Spider, the, the Peter Parker, Miles Morales relationship, uh, anything really. I don't even know where to start, but I wanna have a conversation with you guys. So hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, threads, all that shit at Jake Baldino. But if you stuck around me for like 15 minutes talking Spider-Man, I appreciate it. This is fun. This is what I like to do. Uh, so thank you. Clicking the like button helps me. Thank you for that. And thank you to everybody on YouTube memberships and Patreon for having my back. Whoever you are, thank you for watching. I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time. Pizza's on me. Subscribe because video games.